Why is balanced audio gear more expensive? That's a really good question, and it comes to us from Nick in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Wasn't there a song about Asbury Park? Seems like there was. Okay. Hey, Paul, I've been noticing that balanced gear is almost always more expensive and usually perceived to be of better quality. Is this because more expensive gear allows for the option, or is it really the best choice for interconnects? I really want to know if balanced output circuits are difficult, expensive from an engineering point of view. And the next question is, why not have cheaper gear include balanced outputs? Does balanced outputs always refer to an XLR? Having a small home studio and budget audiophile setup, I've been wondering if my balanced outputs going into studio monitors is giving me some sort of advantage over someone with a cheap amp with skinny speaker wire and cheap bookshelf speakers. Man, come on, there's a lot of questions in here, dude. Uh, let's, let's, all right, Nick, let's see what we can do here. Um, I gotta see if I remember all of that, I probably won't. All right, let's just agree that I won't remember it all. Balanced. First off, balanced is probably interesting to pros and audiophiles and not real interesting to most consumer audio people, okay? So your Sonos crowd, your Bose crowd, the, you know, the, the uh, Panasonic, uh, 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 whatever, Sony, right? Those, those folks don't know what a balance cable is, don't care what a balance cable is. They've got their little, you know, interconnects. So it would be, it would be a waste of money for Sony to add balanced cables and inputs on most of their products because the people using it wouldn't have a clue what to do with it or why. I think that's why they probably don't put them on there because what, what, what good's it going to do? Balance cables are great and they are everywhere in the pro fields. So our Octave Records studio, Gus Guinness's place, um, uh, you know, across the, across the hall over here, it's all balanced. Every, there's not a single-ended cable in it. Everything is balanced, and that's because from a noise standpoint, balanced is so much quieter and better. Good reasons for it. From a design standpoint, it's really no more expensive for a company like us to give you a balanced input and output. I mean, the parts for it are bupkis, nothing. It just, it's just, as long as you know what you're doing and you're designing well, you, you, can, you can easily have a balanced input and an output, take advantage of the common mode rejection for noise, all those good things, easy, easy, easy. And, and we do it on all of our products. I think the only product that doesn't have it is Sprout. Now, Sprout, our little integrated, doesn't have balanced in or out because it doesn't have enough room for that big connector on the back of Sprout. I mean, we really had to be sparing with what we put onto Sprout because, well, there's just not a lot of real estate. And the majority of people using Sprout aren't that interested in a balanced approach. I mean, it's just that the, they don't have something else to connect to it that's balanced, right? So it doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But those are the main reasons why I think, you know, uh, people use balance. Should it be more expensive? No, it really shouldn't. I, I don't know why it's more expensive. We don't charge more for it. Uh, a balanced cable costs a little more because it's got more wire, it's got a more expensive connector, all that kind of good stuff. But electronically, nah. No, it's not really more expensive. It's just that more expensive amps and preamps um, generally have it because the people who are interested in it are also interested in buying higher end products. So maybe that's at the end of the day the answer. So hope that helped uh, and good luck with your home studio out there in Asbury Park. I love it. All right, thanks.